Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Today, we are going to be building a new type of list. I'm trying to depart a little bit from the crazy uh, Sith shenanigans, the Seven Sabres, the Maul Dooku. Uh, I haven't had as much success as I wanted with a singularly focused melee list, and I thought I'd build uh, a more of a ranged list focused on uh, aim tokens and making the best out of aim tokens, and that's what I'm trying to do in today's video if you guys are new here to the channel we are uh do we do giveaways all the time we're doing another one right now for a 25 dollar amazon gift card giveaway you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos also big thanks to today's sponsor luxury playstyle head over to luxuryplaystyle.com get some amazing full metal tokens they are absolutely spectacular you're going to love these they are heavy they are gorgeous and they make you want to play your game even more speaking of luxury playstyle they are also going to be giving you a free crabock token if you spend uh, 35 dollars or more and use code crabock vip that code is also going to save you 15%. They also happen to be a sponsor at the uh, Richmond Open coming up pretty soon. Uh, that is actually going to be in May, May 27th, 28th, and 29th. So if you're anywhere near Richmond, Virginia, and you play X-Wing, Armada, Legion, uh, Bolt Action, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Kings of War, Middle Earth, or uh, lots of other games, um, there is a big convention called the Richmond Open coming up, and I happen to be one of the uh, sponsors of that, as well as Luxury Playstyle. So, uh, so you should head on over and check it out. You got plenty of time to sign up and uh, and and get involved if you are looking to get back into tournament play and conventions. And uh, I've been playing in a couple of tournaments lately, and that's one of the things that led me to kind of depart from my normal list building and kind of return to something maybe a little bit more conventional a little bit a little bit better so so I, I decided you know if I if I want to do aims and I want to do some Amy Amy shenanigans Amy shenanigans she's the latest comedian and uh, she talks about her aim tokens it's no it's general veers uh, is who I have to start out with um, you know in honor of uh, veers watch uh, I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna open things up with general veers he does of course hand out aim tokens which makes him super awesome I'm going to give him a couple of things. I'm going to give him a copy of an Electro Binoculars, and I'm also going to give him a copy of Vigilance. Vigilance is a cool card to have. It's not necessarily absolutely crucial for this build, but I think it is going to help, and uh, it's something that I like to use uh, from time to time. I'm not running any Jedi in this build, though. Not that Jedi are bad. They're certainly not bad at all, but Veers is just as survivable as a Jedi without a dodge token, considering he's got red defense dice and no surge for our defense, but he happens to have surge for offense. Veers is actually a pretty good shooter as well, with sharpshooter, pierce one, range three, surge to critical. He also has inspire, so he can help get rid of some of that, uh, that suppression. He's just, a, he's just an incredibly good uh, commander, um, and I'm going to run a double commander list in this one. Uh, I'm also going to run Iden Versio. Iden Versio, who happens to lead Inferno Squad, uh, is is a great example of somebody who definitely wants aim tokens. She's got Marksman, so she gets to spend aim tokens to improve dice results. This is an incredibly flexible uh, type of uh, keyword to have, and it's one of my favorite keywords because it lets you be in charge. It, it really reduces some of the randomness. Um, now, she starts out with only three dice, but she does have Surge to hit and Pierce one. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things to increase her attack. First off, we're going to add the Seeker Droid, which gives her three more dice, uh, which is, uh, she's got to be close range, you know, you got to be uh, only distance one to be able to do it, but it's it's, it's three more dice, and it makes the attack suppressive, which is nice. Um, plus, you're going to have some aim tokens, you know, you might spend something to reroll, you might not. And the cool thing about Marksman also is that you, you now have... Uh, you know, a little bit of built-in anti-vehicle capability too because you can turn those hits into crits uh, and, and really kind of get through that armor or get into cover. There's a lot you can do with that. So I like that. But um, for, for, for Iden Versio, uh, I am going to give her Overwatch. She's got a one pip that is, uh, that's just very nice for, uh, for being able to you do a standby. Uh, and I'm going to give her Offensive Push to guarantee that she gets at least that one aim when she, when she needs it. Uh, she also has cards that let her recover, so I think cards that want to cause that are uh, are definitely an option. But like, we, and we have some options for loadout. I'm not going with any of the more expensive cards here. Uh, I'll put a situational awareness in there and, and maybe uh, into the fray in case she thinks she's going to be uh, really close uh, into, you know, because she can use a defensive surge. Uh, it, it's a potential option. If I look like, if it looks like there's going to be a melee heavy list uh, that ends up coming in, I might want to put into the fray on her. 
um, you know, it's a, it's a possibility, but maybe I'll, I'll swap those around a little bit. I might want to do, you know, uh, but either way, you know, I like, well, no, I'll leave it, just leave, leave it, I'll do it into the fray up there and situational awareness down there. There we go. Um, something, something kind of like that. Uh, maybe I had to write the first time. Either way, you know, you can, you can, you can figure out which ones you want to do there. We, of course, we're going to give her, uh, her armament since they're both the same cost. This one is very easy for loadout. We have the, uh, the sniper option. We have the repeater. Now, the repeater is, uh, is a real nice five attack weapon. Uh, it does not have pierce one on it, however, though. So, if, again, if you need the pierce and you're close enough, you can certainly just go with your basic weapon. Uh, but we'll add the sniper rifle there to the loadout. And of course, you know, if uh, the terrain is wide open, then maybe we want to we, we might want to deploy her as a sniper. It kind of depends. She's got a lot of flexibility. I think that's one thing that's pretty cool about Iden Versio. Um, and we're going to add some special forces to this list. And uh, Iden definitely wants to support special forces, so I'll start off with Inferno Squad, which is going to automatically have uh, Del Miko and Gideon Hask on there. And uh, they're going to start with uh, the Sane Marana, who's kind of the generic. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with the Inferno Squad booklet, or book, I should say, not booklet, but there it was a uh, fourth member of Inferno Squad by the name of Sane Marana, and uh, she goes kind of nameless in this particular one. She's just your your generic Imperial Special Forces. But we're going to also have Del Miko and, and Gideon Hask and into the uh, into the list, which is going to make this a pretty pretty nice survivable unit. We got a lot of we can take wo a wound without without dying, so that's certainly a good thing. Um, we're going to give them, we want them to have aim tokens, so I'm going to give them Hunter, and I'm going to give them Offensive Push. Of course, I also have General Veers out there who can hand them tokens. By the way, I want to put some other things on General Veers. Um, extra, well, I already did, Electro Binoculars and Vigilance. So so, when, so now Veers has Spotter 3, so he can, uh, he can hand out lots of aim tokens. I like that. I like that quite a bit. All right, so we have our first special forces, which is going to be uh, Inferno Squad, um, and that's all I'm going to put on them for right now. I am going to do a Death Trooper unit. Of course, the Death Troopers happen to also work pretty well with Iden Versio. The Death Troopers are going to start off with a... Uh, I'm, a lot of times, I'll go with DTF-16. I do it a lot. I'm not doing it this time, though. I want the, the greater range, and I want the greater firepower, and uh, this time I'm going with DLT-19 Delta for that three dice. The two red is just really, really good. Um, but to be honest, a lot of times I will go with DTF-16 just because of Compel. And Compel is really, really good. Um, but I've got some Inspire here, so maybe I, you know, maybe I can kind of deal with it. You know, that's kind of how I'm, I'm thinking. You know, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. Uh, offensive Push is one of the things we want to put on these guys. Uh, Death Troopers are going to be great with being able to get a free aim token. And uh, I'm going to put the E11D on here since it's free now. And uh, probably start in long range config, most likely. And, uh, and that's all we're going to do for right now. I sometimes will put other things on Death Troopers. Sometimes I like to put, uh, you know, the emergency stims uh, on them, you know. But, uh, but, but for right now, we're just going to stick with, with this particular setup. I'm going to put another unit out there. I'm going to put an Imperial Royal Guard out there. So I'm going to max out at three special forces for this build. Now the Royal Guard can certainly work with Iden Versio Inferno Squad kind of build. They're not completely optimized for it, but it does fill a gap in my list and something that I kind of did like with the Seven Sabres and the Jedi centric builds that I've been doing is that I have that, that great melee option, of course, and a, a hard answer to enemy Jedi that happen to be out there. And so uh, one of the things I like about the Imperial Royal Guards uh, with the Electro Staff Guard is that you are now going to be immune to Pierce when defending in melee. And they are going to give me the option because, you know, while Iden Versio and all these Imperial Special Forces could be great, you know, a, a, an enemy Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader kind of runs in and, uh, and starts cutting everybody down. I want somebody to be able to go in there and, uh, and, and kind of force that fight. Now, granted, uh, they'll probably have a force push on them, but I'm still going to force them to use it. Maybe I can, you know, tie up with some stormtroopers and some royal guard and something like that, and and kind of keep a withdraw from happening or make it harder to disengage. Um, but the royal guard should should do pretty good here in this case. And if not, then they're still going to function as uh, a good melee unit. They're going to be my best melee unit in this build, and they're also going to help guardian against the commander. They're going to help protect Iden Versio because she will be a pretty high priority target. Uh, because she's going to be seen as being integral to this list. Uh, we are going to give the Imperial Royal Guards uh, tenacity, 
because that's I mean they're gonna definitely want to they can make sure that they take a damage by guarding for someone else which is always a good thing and we're gonna give them offensive push um, just again we did want uh, no actually I'm sorry we're gonna give them into the fray I think it's gonna work a little better they don't, they're not gonna need the aim quite as much uh, but they have they have decent decent dice anyway. But they can really benefit from that surge token probably more so than anything else, especially for defense. Uh, so I I, uh, I really like the uh, into the fray on the Imperial Royal Guards. I think they got a little bit of help with the Wookie Wave, and this is one of those things that can definitely help them out. Now that makes three special forces. We still got to add some core. And I'm only at 532 points. I have a lot left over. Now, if this was a Jedi list, I'd have three, uh, two activations left, and I'd have 600 points. <laughs> and then I have to have no, uh, no room for anything else. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and move up to uh, to, to, to core. I'm going to start with a shore trooper. Um, I, I do really like the shore troopers. That's going to give me room to add a DF-90 mortar trooper in there. So the shore troopers are great, but the mortar is going to be lots of range. Cheap activation, um, still red defense, uh, three to four fire support, uh, you know, suppressive, just really nice option. I do like the mortar, um, a very, very cool unit, especially to fire support into uh, somebody else's shot, especially with the critical one there. It's also potential uh, anti-vehicle stuff, but uh, but not necessarily. It's like anti-vehicle if you really need it. Um, but yeah, I like the critical one on them. Uh, the short troopers themselves are they're great. To, they built in to be able to have the mortar fire support them because they have no surges uh, starting out on them. So we'll start with the T21B, who also happens to have uh, some ha happens to have uh, critical one. There we go. That's that's a little better. Um, but yeah, the T21B there has the critical one, and we're going to uh, put the T21B on there. Now, we are also going to add a few other things. I like to add the, uh, the HQ uplink on this short trooper, and that's going to be the Imperial comms technician, which is the same price as a storm trooper, uh, a short trooper, but you do, you do have to add the comm, but that's, that's fine. It's, it's going to guarantee that the short troopers it can issue an order to themselves, get a free aim token, and then issue an order to the mortar troopers, which can be used for fire support, or, um, or just getting an extra core uh, token sort of out of, uh, out of the bag. And uh, I think that's kind of, uh, I think that's one of the things that we really want to do. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of points left over uh, on these guys. So I'm going to put offensive push on them as well. They're going to move a little bit um, and they're going to need those aim tokens. But I'm going to give them uh, recon intel as well. Now, one of the re reasons for recon intel is once, they're get, once they get deployed, uh, then they get scout one, they get to move. And since the DF-90 mortar can, has to, is a detachment of them, uh, he gives the mortar a lot better uh, kind of setup and, uh, and, and placement. I can potentially get the mortar on top of a building if I need to, or into, uh, you know, like right behind a barricade or in, into a place where it's kind of optimally set up to cover the middle of the battlefield while also being protected. Uh, and to my last core, uh, I'm going to do some stormtroopers. And uh, I'm going to do uh, a Stormtrooper unit that is going to have a uh, T-21. Uh, as much as I do like the RT-97C, the T-21 kind of does go into one of the things that I'm lacking a little bit in here, and that's that critical. I don't have a whole lot of anti-vehicle stuff. I have a little bit. Um, and this is gonna this is gonna help ra round out the list a little bit more. I've got enough red dice elsewhere in the list between Iden Versio, Inferno Squad, and the, uh, the you know the, the the Death Troopers. And I feel like I, I need to manufacture some crits a little bit more. I need to have that capability at least somewhere in the list. Um, so this is one option in addition to uh, some of the command card stuff that's also going to have impact and things like that. So this is these guys are, are here to help with... Now, granted, I could also go with the 19, but that's only impact one. And these guys, you know, but especially if I, especially if I want to fire support and do all that other stuff. So, that, so the T21 is going to work here. It's critical two. Um, and there, of course, the stormtroopers already have precise. So again, this works with the aims. I'm going to be able to roll three, re-roll three dice. Uh, that's going to work well. I'm going to put the specialist in here. A uh, really cool thing about the specialist is, um, I guess I didn't notice this initially. They used to be 15 points. They're now down to nine, which is only one point more than a basic stormtrooper. So there's almost no reason to ever take a basic stormtrooper again. You should always take a specialist. It's still a miniature that can shoot, but it also happens to give you a free aim. Well, 
or surge token, but of course you're probably going to take the aim. Uh, so that makes for a uh, an especially nice unit. So I really like that on this uh, on this stormtrooper. I'm going to add one more stormtrooper that is going to be just basic. And of course we could go stormtrooper, or we could go snowtrooper, but the snowtroopers are a little slower, and I might need this, this basic stormtrooper to be an objective seeker. Um, snowtroopers, there's also an option. I mean, they get free shots after they move, so there's certainly that, but I don't have any lack of shooting, so I think the movement is going to be more important for a, uh, a basic stormtrooper here in this list. And this brings me up to 799, and we have nine activations. Uh, so I think, I think, and, but, and just about everybody is, is a good shooter, right? We do have, you know, one, the one mortar, which by itself would be kind of weak. And we have the one stormtrooper unit that's kind of empty. That would be a little weak, but everybody else is pretty strong. And I feel like this is a lot more well-rounded of a list that can, uh, you know, work at more ranges and doesn't have to be up close now. Uh, and also a lot of, uh, a lot of red defense dice on these guys, red defense dice, red defense dice with defensive surge. Uh, red defense dice, red defense dice. Does anybody have white defense dice in this list? Anybody at all? Nobody. Everybody's red defense dice. So we're gonna we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some survivability. All right. Not a whole lot of defensive surge. The death troopers have defensive surge, but they're about it. But you know that's why we do have we have some dodge shenanigans with Iden Versio. Also, that's kind of one of the reasons Veers has vigilance. Uh, you know, there's retinue. And, and things like that. And we might want Iden Versio just to keep the dodge because she has nimble, so I can just make sure she has a dodge for the whole game, which I think is going to be super cool. All right, so hopefully she'll stay alive because I'm going to use all of her command cards. So let's talk Let's talk about command cards. We're going to do all of Iden's command cards. I'm going to start with Pulse Scan. Um, yes, of course, um, Standby is a, a possibility, but, uh, you know, Sharpshooter 2, Aim Token right away. And then she also gets that dodge to go along with that, which is super cool. Uh, incapacitate. This is a fun one. It's it's one you're not always going to use, but uh, but it's still it's a way to give some suppression, and it's a potential way to, to push uh, orders back up into uh, into things that can mess with fire support. That can also mess with a droid. Now all of a sudden that droid has, it gets stuck with AI. So uh, so that's kind of a fun thing. We've got concussive blast. Uh, the you know the, the the red attack dice is nice. It's not really the main point here. One of the cool things about this is it lets Iden recover. And as we've seen on Iden, she's got some things that she's gonna want to do. She's got offensive push, which is gonna be an exhaust. She's also got uh, the 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 repeater. Um, I'm sorry, the seeker droid, which is shielded and uh, recharge with recharge. So when she recovers, she gets that shield back as well. So a recover for Iden is gonna be especially good, as well as recover for a lot of other folks too. Uh, we're gonna want a lot of other recover. Uh, you know, recoverings with, with all the offensive pushes we've got here throughout the list. Uh, I think recover is going to be a nice thing. And hey, by the way, Veers has a card for that as well. So we're going to take Concussive Blast and we'll take Tactical Strike. This is one of the best cards that Aiden has. Uh, and of course, it's going to work very, very well with other special forces. Obviously, Inferno Squad benefits from this, but so do the other special forces. And of course, it, it works really well if you can fit three special forces into this list because it's effectively a three pip that gives out four face up order tokens, which is super groovy and, and allow gives them steady and tactical one if they reduce their speed to one. So if you, you maybe you play this like on turn two, you have your all these guys kind of step out into the open, you know, I love to have like step out into the open, shoot, and then step back in to safety. I love having all of them do that. Um, and so that's really cool. Plus it gives you, you know, tactical ones, so lots more aim tokens, again, fitting into the theme of the build. Uh, for Veers' cards, we are going to take Maximum Firepower. This is one of my anti-vehicle cards. Plus, it gives Veers a nice shot. He does have Search to Crit already. He's already a pretty uh, a pretty great crack shot. And, uh, and this is a fun one. It's definitely a fun one to be able to play. Um, it's a good turn one, a good opener. Uh, and uh, and that's always a cool thing. I'm not going to be using evasive maneuvers since, uh, of course, Iden Versio has two two pips that are already in there, and I am not running any vehicles, so this one is a very easy choice not to include. But oh my, oh my, we're absolutely including Imperial Discipline here. Uh, when a friendly unit is issued an order, it may recover. Veers plus two units. This one is uh, tremendous. It's going to give me two more recovers so I can opt to go with Iden Versio if I need that, or I can go to the Death Troopers. They've got the uh, offensive push right there. I can go to, by the way, um, it doesn't say issued an order by this card. I'll point out. So a cool thing about that 
is that I can have my shore troopers, and I expect this to be errated at some point, um, because it should be when it's issued an order by this card, because that means anybody who does HQ uplink also gets to immediately recover, and I, I, that seems a little bit broken to me, because like the shore troopers can have offensive push already gone, and but kept HQ uplink, and then, of course, they, they get both of those back after they, you know, get in an order issued to them, which is super cool. But also we've got, uh, we've got uh, some recovering that could happen down here with offensive push uh, on, on so many of these other special forces units. Uh, I think it's going to be a great card. It's probably one of the best cards in the, uh, in the build. So the three pips are, are where we're really shining here. Uh, and the cool thing about that too is since we're nine activations isn't super high, but like a lot of times, you know, you, you want to make sure your heavy hitters go last. So, uh, you know, a three pip can sometimes be a really good thing. It's like, all right, I got the power here, but I'm going to make you do some of your activations first. So then by the time I, I go with all of my dudes, I, I know what, you know, which areas of the board are safe and which areas of the board are at risk. Um, I do have some battle plans here. Well, We'll talk about these. Um, uh, these, I, I went with Recover the Supplies, Sabotage the Moisture Evaporators, uh, Intercept the Transmissions. That's just, uh, you know, uh, Recover the Supplies is a fun one for the in well, all the infiltrate I have, too. And I put Hostage Exchange in here. I think the Stormtroopers could potentially survive long enough, or I have the option to put the Shore Troopers out there. And uh, in addition to the Shore Troopers being out there, I can then deploy the Mortar really far out there, which could be weird. I mean, it, it, it's, it's something you'll have to kind of gauge on whether or not you want to do it or not. Uh, but it's kind of cool having that option. Um, it works a little bit better in the Rebel Veteran scenario since those guys are range 1 to 3 uh, versus, you know, the fire support being, you know, you know wanting, you know, longer range. But still pretty cool. Still pretty cool because even though, um, you know, your hostages can't be shot or whatever, they could still shoot and like, so I could still be like, you know what, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll risk losing the objective, but I have a chance to take out your commander on turn one, you know, like it could potentially happen. So uh, that's always fun. For deployments, I went with uh, battle lines. I always, I almost always go with battle lines. I think I 100% do go with battle lines all the time. Uh, advanced positions, major offensive, and uh, danger close. Uh, Danger Close is a little bit risky to me, but, uh, you know, it was like that or Hemmed In, and I look at Hemmed In, and I think to myself, I hate this one as blue player. I mean, why would I want to be surrounded? You know, I, I, of course, it does kind of depend on the... It really all depends on the terrain. A lot of times, this is not going to be where I want, you know, where I want to be. So, I'm not, I just don't... I just never like this one. I actually prefer this one as red player. <laughs> Usually, it's just from my experience, because now I can kind of outflank. You're letting yourself get flanked, kind of, sort of. I don't know. I, I just don't like it. Um, but uh, then for condition, I'm going with minefield. Uh, this one is 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 is, is nasty. Um, we'll put minefield supply drop. We'll put clear conditions and hostile environment. And that is the build. Uh, Seven ninety nine. Uh, you know, nine activations. Lots of aims between all of the tactical one and all of the uh, offensive pushes, and then Veers handing out three, and then Shore Troopers getting one themselves when they issue an order to themselves, and then the free recovering. I think we got some cool potential going on here. We have a little bit of impact for vehicles. We've got a little bit of, well, one unit that's immune to Pierce. We can maybe maybe an answer for a single Jedi list. Uh, I think uh, I think it could be a, a very good list, but I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comment section. Uh, and that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you guys for watching today. Thanks for letting me know. Please join the Discord. Let's keep the discussion going over there. Um, and uh, big thanks to uh, all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. I'll post a link to the Tabletop Admiral uh, site where I have this list hosted. Check it out. And uh, if you want to check any of the more little links in the uh, video section, you can do that. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. And as always, may the Force be with you.